Hi guys, welcome back, or if it's your first time, welcome to my channel, uh, to Kitty and Beyond. My name is Siobhan. I'm an intuitive tarot therapist, spiritual counselor, Reiki master practitioner, and student of psychology. Um, I do readings for the Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine energies, as well as energies of the General Collective. So today we have a spread um, combining the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine energies. It's not going to be a Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine separate read. It's, it's all tied together and it's our journey together as one because we are not separate, we are one. So um, I pulled some cards and I laid everything out because I wanted to just get everything um, done more quickly, more efficiently today. Um, we're losing the sunlight pretty fast where I'm at and I'm trying to do it by natural light. So we have the goddess and the fool. And these are the archetype cards by Caroline Meese and they represent archetypes that we play out within ourselves, and um, that we experience around us in the stories of our lives. So the goddess um, has light attributes of The feminine expressed through wisdom, nature, life force, and sensuality, and has shadow attributes of exploitation of the female nature and form. So, in this reading, I feel as though we're coming into our goddess aspects in the light. We are not in the shadow any longer if we were, or if we were never in the shadow, we are fully grounding our light attributes of the goddess into the physical realm because we've got the uh, Queen of Pentacles clarifying. And the Queen of Pentacles all, is all about grounding and stability and prosperity and um, balance. And so we're bringing our goddess self, our higher selves into the 3D realm, and we're using it with our, with our higher light abilities to manifest. So the magician also came up to clarify. So we're using our goddess abilities to manifest what we want in our lives, be it through what we want for abundance in our career, what we want in our love lives, what we want um, on our spiritual journey, whatever it is. The manifestation is very potent and very powerful right now. So it's imperative that you remain in your light attributes at this time goddesses divine feminines i'm speaking to you directly um, and divine masculines as well because the divine masculine hold the same power just at a very different end of the spectrum a very um different polarity as we are two separate points of the same energy and so clarifying those two we got the emperor which is the divine masculine in the 5d the divine masculine in his higher attributes as well so this coming up with the queen of pentacles the magician and the goddess i feel as though the divine masculine is recognizing the divine feminine's goddess nature her her inner goddess her essence her true essence not her 3d form who she is as a human being but who she is as a spiritual being who she is as an eternal being. He's recognizing this because he's witnessing her power of creation. He's witnessing her manifesting abilities and it's affecting him as well. He's feeling it and he's starting to manifest. So that's beautiful. And I also feel as though from the, the feminine aspect of the emperor coming up is that we are standing in our authority. We're standing in our leadership and our ability to organize and implement effectively in our lives with our creativity. So that's uh, for the combined for the divine masculine and feminine. So now we have sort of this bridge that came up. I pulled this and this first, and this came up after, but I felt that it needed to go here right in the middle. This is a sort of a bridge to get to the next phase. So the bridge is the nine of wands. And the nine of wands in this deck is all about... Um, being, feeling like you're, there's a problem that's very difficult to fix and he's not sure how to fix it. It's kind of overwhelming and he's trying to contemplate a good way to go about it, but he's not seeing a solution. And so he he's finding that he needs to ask outside for help. And so what we see clarifying the nine of wands is the star. And the star represents hope, that guiding light to take you to where you need to go, to help you to solve the problem. The star represents abundance, infinite knowledge, infinite wisdom, and infinite unconditional love. So the star is going to guide 
both the divine feminine and the divine masculine out of this conflicting arena that we've been existing in for quite some time and move us into this fool energy, taking that leap of faith forward. So the fool, the light attributes are fearlessly revealing emotion, helping people laugh at absurdity and hypocrisy, whereas the shadow attributes are using humor to wound rather than liberate and denial of your emotional truth. So I feel as though we're 100% stepping into the light attributes of the fool, and we're seeing this with the um, Three of Pentacles, clarifying. And the Three of Pentacles is all about working together to create a common goal, planning for the future and reaping the rewards of harvest and, and good work, being proud of your work and putting in that hard work and working as a team, cooperation and help. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be stepping out of this headspace that we've been in of conflict, confrontation, and and problem mentality. We're going to be finding hope and moving forward fearlessly, taking that leap of faith into working together as a team instead of separately. We're going to work together to solve this problem. And so we see the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is about the, the completion of this problem. And in this one, he looks like he's really struggling with it. But the Ten is about completion. It's about the end of the cycle. And in the traditional tarot, the image depicts a man carrying a bundle of sticks and he's feeling very, very weighed down, very burdened by it. So this is all about that burden. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to work together to put down this burden, to determine what's worth carrying and what's not worth carrying anymore. We're going to set it down together and we're going to move forward. And we see that with the Empress clarifying and the Empress actually came up in the same position on the other side as the Emperor. So as you can see here, they're mirroring each other and their counterparts. So these two of us coming together, the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine, because the Empress is the Divine Feminine, that's that standing in our Goddess, our fertility, our creativity, our ability to, to create within ourselves and without, in our world, in our, in our environment. So these two very powerful archetypes are coming forward and asking us to step into these roles and are telling us that we are going to step into these roles because I feel as though this reading is very much about what's to come and usually I don't do you know f fortune telling or <laughs> or predictive readings but I very much feel as though empathically energetically that this is the energy that we're moving into and it may be in the next couple of months or it may be in the next couple of years, but we are moving into this energy and it's beginning now. We're, we're grounding this into the, ener into the physical realm now and then we'll move forward from there as, to, as divine order per, uh, guides and, and um, implements. So then after these two main sections with the bridge, we've got another little bridge and then it leads to the outcome, which I'll get into in a second. So the Another little bridge, so the outcome of working together and putting down those burdens is going to be the Nine of Pentacles. And in this card, it's beautiful because she's resting, she's cozy, she's comfy, she's got all of her abundance and her bounty and her loved ones all around her, and she's just so relaxed and, and fulfilled. She's very fulfilled, satisfied, and happy, and that's where we're going to get. We're, that's where we're going to or where we are right now and we're coming into the knowledge of that and then judgment came up to clarify so when once we get into that harmonious state of existence with each other and within ourselves we're going to be called to judgment to do a, a greater service so once we serve each other in our healing then it's time to heed the call to serve humanity because ultimately, that's what the Twin Flames are about. The Twin Flames is not just a, a romantic relationship. That's part of it. And I've said this in my other readings. But the Twin Flame journey is a spiritual purpose that we've come to implement together. That we've come to serve humanity through our union. Our union will bring about our healing of humanity. So what we see is the Fool coming up again. We have him in the archetype cards, and now we've got him in the fairy tarot. So the fool, 
He's playful. He's fun. He's ready to move forward fearlessly and take that leap of faith into something new. And what we're leaping into is not always going to be easy because throughout this journey, it's not all peaches and cream. So we've got the seven of wands. And so there's a lot of wands energy coming up and a lot of the wands energy, especially the, the seven, nine and 10 are all about conflict burdens and disagreements. And this card especially is about disagreements that need to be resolved through compromise and working together. So again, the theme of working together is coming up for a reason. So we've got to work together to solve these problems. Once we work together to solve the problems within ourselves, then we're going to have to make an even bigger leap of faith into solving the problems together to help humanity. We're going to solve, not solve the problems, we're going to contribute to the healing of humanity. So then we're seeing, and that's going to require temperance. That's going to require patience and balance. We're going to need to do it slowly, bit by bit, healing one thing and then stepping back and seeing what the result was, and then healing another thing and stepping back and seeing what the result was. And it may take more and more of our ability to compromise with each other and with what, we, what our expectations of the results will be, but that's part of the process. And what's going to come of that is a transformation. We're seeing the transformation not only of ourselves, but of the whole, of the collective of Twin Flames and of the collective of humanity. We are coming into now the end of an era. We are ending the war. We are ending the barbarity. We are ending the pain, the suffering, and the strife, the egocentric me first mentality. And we're stepping into a collective love vibration where we heal rather than harm. And this knowledge and this service will lead the divine masculine into his priesthood, into his spiritual authority, his spiritual knowing, and his mission, his knowledge, his wisdom. That is where we are heading. We are going on this journey together and we have been in separation for a reason. We had to come into wholeness within ourselves to be able to come together and help each other to heal in a much easier way, a much more divinely guided way. So i um, just going to, I've got my <laughs> coconut milk matcha green tea latte, which is the first time I've ever tried to make this. So I literally Googled how do I do it? And it's just like pour it into the milk and stir it around till it's hot. And I was like, okay, that's not rocket science. So sometimes we make things out to be the reason I'm telling you this and I'm realizing it as I'm saying it is because sometimes we make things out to be more difficult than they are. Sometimes we overthink things, we overanalyze something and it stops us from actually doing it because I've been wanting to do this forever, but I've always just been like, well, I'll go to to a coffee shop and I'll buy it there. But it adds up, it's expensive. We're not thinking about the long term when we're doing that. So this way, I happened to come across the matcha in the store, which was synchronistically right in front of my face, <laughs> which is when I was, and I was wanting it at that moment. So thank you universe for this manifestation ability. And it's so much easier than I thought it was going to be. And it's so much more affordable than I thought it was going to be. So this journey doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be. It's only as difficult as you make it to be for yourself because you are a creator. You are a goddess. You are grounding this energy into the physical realm. So if you tell yourself that it's going to be divinely guided, divinely orchestrated, and divinely assisted by your angels, your guides, and your higher self, it's going to make this whole process a lot easier. <laughs> So I don't know why that just wanted to come out, but it did, so we're going to go with it. Um, now I'm going to pull, oh, actually, you know what? First I wanted to pull some of the Nature's Whispers cards, because I just, these are like my new favorite. So can I get a couple for Infinite Blessings? Yay! <laughs> and I want to do a full shuffle, so let's see. What else do we have for the... The big picture, yeah, exactly. So we've got the infinite blessings card coming up to clarify the goddess, the magician, the emperor, and the queen of pentacles. It's saying that when we step into our manifesting creative abilities, we will have these infinite blessings because life does not happen to you. 
life happens through you. And once you realize this, you step into your responsibility and your power as a creative being, and you're able to manifest what you want in your life. And yes, it does take, with great power comes great responsibility, because you must take that that on and, and make sure that you're not producing anything that you don't want, or focusing on things that you don't want, or making things out to be difficult because then you're manifesting that. And that's exactly what the whole <laughs> green tea thing was about, is, is manifesting in the light, manifesting the positive aspects, manifesting things that you want and making things easier for yourself. And then we got the big picture, which is all about what we're doing here, what what this our purpose as light workers and as divine feminines and masculine twin flames, this is what we came here to do is to help heal the earth. And as you can sh see, she's beaming that rainbow out of her palm, which you do have a chakra on each one of your palms of your hand which emit the frequencies of light from within you and they are the, those rainbow frequencies so in Reiki um, we work with the energy of the the ray which is the universal life force energy and that emits through the chakra or travels through the chakras and emits different frequencies um, and that's exactly what we're seeing here she's she's using that Reiki energy to heal the earth and to help humanity to bloom and to flourish and not to wilt and wither as we have been in the past. But our our spiritual winter is now coming to an end and we're stepping into the age of enlightenment, the golden age, which is our spiritual spring. Our spiritual and sp spring and summer are on the horizon and we are moving into this beautiful warmth of the central galactic sun where we have this help from our, our galaxy, our solar system, our beings of light who are here to help us and from ourselves because we're downloading these light codes and are able to use them for our greatest and highest good and the greatest and highest good of all. And so that's what we're going to be doing with our, our mission, our whole mission, this whole other section of stepping into priesthood and stepping into our divine power is for this bigger picture. Um, let's get some romance ones because I feel like this has been a lot about the mission and not so much about the romantic union and I know that a lot of most people are watching this for information on the romantic union and not so much about the mission but the mission is a part of the romantic union it is actually the end goal of the romantic union so it, and trust we just got trust so we need to trust that this situation is calling for you to have faith. So we are being called to have faith in our own abilities, in our own manifestation of the union, and trusting in the bigger picture and the bigger calling of this union. And remembering that we are coming together for a very divinely guided purpose and a very divinely guided reason. Mission, calling, contract. This is what, this is what it's about. Attraction. So that attraction is there for a reason. You are two separate sides of the polarity. And like magnets, you will be attracted to each other when divine timing is right. So you attract your romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. So when you set your vibration to the vibration of joy, you're going to attract joy. You're going to attract your divine counterpart like a magnet because there's that attraction there and it's there for a reason it's there to draw you back together it's there to because union is the end goal union is what we came here to do and it's for that bigger picture it's for service of humanity it's not just so that we can you know live happily ever after and that's the end of the story no, our fairy tale continues. Our fairy tale doesn't end with happily ever after, getting married and riding off into the sunset on the white horse. That's, that's part of it, yes. But after that, then we go to work. Then we work together and we make things happen. And we, we create a beautiful, loving environment so that humanity can flourish. And it's going to happen through us. That zero point energy will be released and we will heal humanity as part of humanity. Okay, let's get one, um, one crystal oracle card to close out the reading. One crystal oracle card, 
please and thank you. Oh, that one. Pink granite. Oh, let's see what that says. I don't know. 36. The lightning bolt. Pink granite. Hold on. Let me show you. Pink granite has the highest paramagnetic resonance of all stones and creates immense energy. You are an ancient Egyptian with the arcane knowledge that roll entails, but your but you originated in the stars. You understand cycles of birth, death, and rebirth and immortality. You have been involved in ancient power struggles. Cut yourself loose. Become more grounded. Learning experiences occur regularly and serendipitous synchronicities put you in exactly the right place at the right time. Be assertive and make things happen. Events move with surprising speed once you focus your intention. So see the whole picture before deciding. <laughs> Bigger picture. See the whole picture before deciding. Be pragmatic, but don't give power away. Maintain balance in a relationship. You need diplomacy and tact. Lightning can strike twice. If dealing with ancient strife, look at the bigger picture. Oh my god, it literally says the bigger picture. Um, everything must pass away. Death precedes transformation and rebirth. And that's exactly what this whole spread was talking about. We literally have the bigger picture. We literally have death. We, re we, we really have all of exactly what that was all just talking about. So I love it when that happens. I love it when everything is synchronistically comes together like that. And it's, it's like, you know, I shouldn't doubt it anymore. I, I, it's been a year and a half since my awakening. And a lot of because my life path number is trust. It's one of the things that um, can come most difficult is your, and by the way, if you're interested in what your life path number is, you can go on to um, uh, I believe it's the path of the oh Okay, I'm sorry. It, it just Google life path numbers, um, and it's pe pa there. It is path of the peaceful warrior. Thank you, thank you, spirit. Um, and you just put in your birth date, and it comes up with your life path numbers and what your the overall theme of what you came here to uh, to learn. So you'll have different lessons as you go out throughout your life, but that's your overall theme about the, the main lesson that you came here to learn or the, the main thing that you came here to experience. And that can oftentimes be something that comes most uh, difficult to you. So trust for me is about trusting in spirit, in the guidance and in myself, in my own wisdom and not uh, doubting. And so a lot of the time things will happen and I won't know what they mean and I'll go and look them up afterwards and they have to happen that way because if it ha if I had known about it to begin with and then experienced it I would doubt I would doubt I would say to myself well maybe I you know I imagined it or I made that up in my own head or something like that that self doubt that ego comes in so having it happen that way spirit is <laughs> is guiding me and saying no this is real this is this is proof and confirmation for you that you're you are experiencing the truth of what you came here to experience, which is that spiritual awakening and that spiritual knowledge of that you are not this physical self, that you are a spiritual being having a human experience, not the other way around. Um, so I'm going to close it out there with the pink granite. That was just so perfect tying the whole reading together. Um, thank you to everyone who has liked, followed, subscribed, commented, um, energy donations, all of it. Um, I love you all and I appreciate your feedback, your enthusiasm and your support. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you guys. Bye.